This segment of Naperville Sports Weekly is brought to you in part by the Daily Herald. Well, North Girls soccer coach Steve Goletz, we're here uh, at the stadium. You guys just opened your season earlier this week, your first season here at the helm. What's, what's that transition been like coming over from an assistant in the boys' program to now where you're the head man for the girls' program? Yeah, it's been, uh, been pretty smooth for us, I would say. Uh, definitely a little bit more added responsibility in terms of the whole program setting um, and trying to create that culture that you want um, as a varsity coach. Uh, I think the girls have responded very well. Uh, I, I've been very lucky to inherit a group of girls that uh, have been around on the varsity level and have gotten some great coaching, whether it be high school and club and the combination of both. And, and uh, so the, the transition period for me has been great. Uh, the kids have been very receptive to coaching. They've worked hard. Uh, they've been very open-minded. And I think uh, across the board, I think they see it as a fresh start for them as well. Um, because you know, no matter what happens, every coach sees things differently. And uh, I think that's obviously raise the level of intensity a little bit at practice and uh, which has definitely been a good thing and I hope that that level of intensity will stay throughout the season in terms of people wanting to obviously prove who they are as a player game in and game out. Should we see, uh, expect to see any style changes from you guys uh, on the pitch here this season? Yeah, I think, you know, overall, I mean, you know, there's always your minor tweaks in terms of formations and how, you know, everybody plays. I mean, I think, uh, you know, in the past few years, they, they did a great job defensively. And I think we're, we obviously are building on that. And coming from the boys program uh, is something that we take a ton of pride in is our defending. And, and if you can obviously work that out at the start and then build on that, um, you know, those are some, those are obviously great things to have. Um, and, you know, in terms of, you know, minor tweaks, I'm sure I got my own stuff in terms of restarts and in terms of how I want to attack and, mm -hmm. and how I want people to defend and which way we want to force the ball and all those kind of things. But overall, soccer is soccer. I mean, the girls obviously have been around enough and played enough that there isn't anything major. I'm not coming in and, and, and throwing out everything and mm -hmm. starting all over again. So I've been very lucky to inherit a group that doesn't have to be a com complete rebuilding process. And, uh, you know, you talk about that. It's, it's not anywhere close to a complete building pro rebuilding process second in state last season you know number three in the ESPN fab 50 right now uh, what's the pressure that comes with something like that for a first-time head coach yeah I mean I think there's a little bit of pressure with it and I think last night helped getting game one under our belt um, especially you know across the board for some of the girls that hadn't had you know varsity minutes or extended varsity minutes I think that obviously calms everybody's nerves I'm sure you know calm my nerves as a coach um, to kind of get your feet wet. Um, you know, I've kind of approached it and I've told the girls, you know, from the start that, you know, last year's last year. And, um, you know, everybody knows, especially in the game of soccer, that the best team doesn't always win every game. Um, but if we can continue to work and get better and we can continue to put ourselves in a position to compete at every game and uh, the results should kind of handle itself. Uh, and, and that's kind of the mentality that we're going with. And their, their ranking at the start of the season is in a is it a tribute to what they did mm -hmm. last season and they need to obviously remember and realize and I remind them of the hard work that they put in last year to get to that point and if we can replicate that and uh, you know having so many girls back that know what that that hard work can lead to I think obviously it, it hopefully will fuel us throughout the season. You've mentioned it a couple times before you know a lot of varsity experience on this roster you know names like Swift, Drendel, Zalak what what exactly does that do for a coach when you have a lot of these girls that they're juniors and they've they've seen more varsity time than some seniors in the area have. I mean, it definitely helps, you know, going into to a game when you have kids that have been around and have been through, you know, pressure games and have played against, you know, great, great competition. Um, you know, it makes your job easier as a coach. I mean, it really does because you trust those girls. You trust that they're going to make the decisions that that you know they're going to make. And, um, you know, it's great to have an extra. It's, it's like having an extra couple of coaches on the field because they can calm us down when we need to be calmed down. They hopefully can dictate play in terms of knowing what we want to do. and. Um, you know, use their experience to step up and, and lead us as a group. And they've done a great job of that so far. And even though it's been one game, they've done a great job in practice of leading the underclassmen and leading some of the, the girls that haven't had as much experience and trying to teach them the culture that has been here in terms of the success we've had and, and why we've had that success in terms of the hard work and the dedication that they put in. Now we've talked about the veterans. Uh, you also have some younger players on this group. Kayla Sharp was somebody that we're familiar with as far as, you know, seeing on the basketball court what she was able to do there. How does she translate to a a soccer player and maybe who are a couple of the younger other younger players that we're going to be seeing this year yeah Kayla is somebody obviously as you mentioned knowing knowing and covering her throughout the basketball season Kayla is a phenomenal athlete um, and as good of an athlete as Kayla is she's probably a better soccer player um, so you combine those two things and and you make 
one heck of a player. Um, and uh, Kayla in game one, I thought against Barrington, played phenomenal. I thought she was a, she was very, very good for us in the back. She's very solid. She comes from a great club background where she's gotten some phenomenal coaching. Um, and you can really see that she's confident in terms of what she needs to do on the field. Mm -hmm. um, she was great in the air for us. Um, we got a couple other girls. Abby Boswell is a freshman as well who started up top for us with Zoe. And I think Abby's somebody that is going to surprise some people throughout the year. I think obviously Zoe garners a lot of attention throughout the, the season. And, mm -hmm. and Abby's somebody that uh, I think I, I take my chances in 1v1 settings with, with Abby if, if, if teams are keying on Zoe. Um, and with that being said, too, I also think there's some other girls that are going to continue to step up, or at least I'm hoping will step up throughout the season. Um, but those two freshmen definitely have come in um, as a first year coach and have, have turned my head a little bit and, and uh, forced me to, to put them on the field in terms of their play in the first couple of weeks. You mentioned Kayla on the back end. You, you lost a couple of big defenders from this squad from last year. Who else is in the back that, you know, hoping to solidify things back there? Yeah. Well, you know, Angela Woodlackey's back, and she's somebody that played left back for a while last year, and so she's somebody that we've, we've leaned on. Um, we got Jen Korn back. Jen is somebody that was a freshman uh, and, and played here as a freshman, uh, then took sophomore and junior year. She played with her club team, and now she's back this year, and she's somebody that is, has played center back for us here at the start of the year. And then, uh, you know, obviously Kayla, and then Anna Prescott, and Jill Van Campen, and Abby Mangifrida, and Kirsten Dykes that are all people that we've we've kind of started working into the system in terms of trying to trying to get them to where they need to be and uh, work on things. And I think all those girls are going to hopefully push each other throughout the season to uh, for playing time and then push each other once we do kind of get our, our roster set and solidified to hopefully push the people that are in there to stay in there. And if not, that there's somebody, you know, knocking on the door to, to get playing time and to be there and be ready. You opened your season earlier this week with a, uh, a game against a very good Barrington program. You know, you look through your guys' schedule and, you know, the tournaments you guys play in and, you know, really just the talent in the area is really top notch. This sectional is probably one of the toughest in the state, if not the toughest. How much does that kind of help you guys build things up and, you know, raise your level of play because you realize where you guys need to be at come sectional time. Yeah, I think it, playing in this area for soccer is phenomenal. I mean, you know going through the state tournament that um, you are gonna see a quality game from game one to hopefully the state championship. Um, and, and you know that is something that when, when we build our schedule, we know that from the schedule we play, there's gonna be no surprises in the postseason. We're gonna know, obviously, what's out there. We're gonna know what it takes to win a game, let's say that's against a very physical team. We're gonna know what it's like to play against a team that's super technical. We're gonna know what it's like to play against a team who plays very direct. You know, those are all things that, when you have a schedule that we have, you can sort those things out. So then when it gets to playoff time, you hopefully know, okay, what's our idea to solve it? How are we gonna solve those issues? How are we gonna hopefully attack and exploit some things? And then, obviously, not saying that it always works, but you feel like you feel like you're prepared going into those games. Um, and, and, and having that and having the girls playing games that game in and game out, they know they have to show up. Um, they know they have to show up and they have to bring it because if they don't, they're going to get beat. And, and to have that mentality, you hopefully then will, will get away from having a letdown here and there. And, and that's, I know, something coaches always fear. And when, when your schedule's as tough as it is, if girls take the day off, they get punished for it. And I think it's a good learning lesson that one, if they do do it, this is what happens. Um, so going into the postseason, we, we have a good feel for where we at and where we're at and where everybody else is at. With that, how do you keep these girls focused on that next game rather than you know looking ahead to May? Right. I think you know obviously. Uh, I'm a huge believer in if we do the things and we work on the things that we're working on throughout practice and we set a couple of things each game going in of we want to be better at this, we want to be better at this, we want to be better at this than who we're playing against. And we feel that if we do those things that the results will come. Will it always happen? Absolutely not. In the game of soccer, you may dominate a game and, and you may not get the result that you want. But if you put yourself in that position time after time after time, the results start kind of going your way. Um, and I think that what I'm stressing to the girls this year is to not be worried as much about results, but as our growth of a team. And are we getting better? Are we, you know, because I'm going to be working in terms of different formations and getting different kids in at different places. So when we go into the postseason, we feel very confident that we have the group on the field that's going to give us the best chance to win. And we know that when kids come off the field and then sub onto the field, that those kids are going to give us the best chance to win because they're in the position that they feel the most comfortable in. And I think as a group throughout the season, if we focus on those things, um, hopefully it keeps us focused on every single game.
Definitely. Well, Steve, uh, for your guys' sake, I hope the weather stays this nice for you guys the whole season. I'm, I'm sure it won't because of where we are. But uh, good luck the rest of the way, and uh, thanks for having us on. Thanks so much. It was great talking with you.